Hello and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther and in this Winter Sowing 101 series I'm going to talk about the steps you take to harden off your winter sown seedlings before you go to transplant them into their container, into the raised bed, into the ground, wherever the final destination for them is. If you're looking for a video on how to harden off seedlings that you've grown indoors under grow lights, this video is not really for you, although the principles generally apply, but the process is actually much more complicated. It takes a lot more time than this process, which is actually one of the great benefits of winter sowing. Um, if you haven't heard winter sowing before, check out my winter sowing, the other videos in this winter sowing 101 series. And basically, if you don't have time to check that out first, um, it's a way of growing seedlings outdoors and things like a milk jug, soda bottles, juice bottles, um, and using those bottles as mini greenhouses to grow the seedlings during the winter and early spring instead of indoors under grow lights. All right, so before I get going on going outside and showing you me opening up my containers and all of that, let me say a couple of things. Let me break down the, the steps as I think of them. So the first thing you need to do is think about when you want to transplant them. You really don't want to be opening up your jugs. There are some exceptions to this, but as a general rule, you don't want to open up your jugs until a few days before you're going to transplant them. The main reason is they get a lot of benefit from the jugs remaining closed and sealed up and that nice greenhouse effect. And once they're open, they are prone to, to um, dry out faster. They may not get all the benefits of uh, the moisture control and the uh, temperature control and all of that, the consistency and all of that. Um, and they're also somewhat, even though they still get moistened by the elements, they're also somewhat protected from the elements, including temperatures to some extent, as well as extreme winds um, and hard rain or sleet or things like that. So first step is figure out when you're going to transplant your plants. If you're growing cool weather veggies, then you're probably going to be transplanting them in the early spring. And if you're growing summer veggies like tomatoes, cucumbers, bell pep or peppers, squash, those are summer veggies that can't handle a frost. You're going to be planting them after your average last frost date, which you can look up online. Um, just, you know, put in your city or your zip code and ask average last frost date. For me in Maryland zone 7A, that's early to mid-May is about the time that I will be transplanting those summer veggies. So you can see how, um, you know, there's a huge difference between me transplanting now late March for um, my kale, my peas, things like, and radishes and beets and things like that, um, versus, and lettuces versus this summer. So first step, figure out when you're going to transplant them. Um, second step is look inside the jugs and see how far the seedlings have come along. When a seedling first sprouts, and they all look a little different when they first sprout, but basically there is a first set of leaves that come up and they do not look anything like the plant actually looks later on in its life. Like if you're walking by somebody's garden, those leaves don't look like the leaves you would normally see. Those are the first set of leaves. And then there's a second set and beyond, which are called true leaves. Those leaves are true to how the plant looks. And um, really, you don't wanna transplant your seedlings until you see that you have at least one, if not two sets of true leaves. And some people even say like, until your seedlings are up to four inches tall, but I don't know that I would go by that because some seedlings grow super fast and some grow super slow and some grow, shoot up and get tall. Like um, my sunflowers are definitely <laughs> more than four inches tall, but they're still on their first set of leaves. So I think going by the, this first or second set of true leaves is best. Some people like to transplant their seedlings at the very young stage. Some like to wait to the very last minute to transplant them. And that's really a matter of choice for you as well as being aware of the weather. So the third step is once you've decided what you're gonna do with your seedlings, like where they're gonna go, when you need to transplant them, then open up the containers one to three, probably three days is ideal, ahead of when you expect to transplant them. You don't want to do it sooner than that because you lose all the benefits of having that winter sowing, that, that um, greenhouse effect, right? But um, they do need a couple of days to adjust. Um, unlike seedlings you're bringing from, out, from indoors to the outdoors, they are already pretty temperature hardy, but they're not used to having a breeze on them. So you need to open up so they can get some used to being blown around a little bit. 
Um, and also the temperature inside the jug is gonna be different than the temperature outside. And so they just need a little bit of time to get used to the different conditions. And what that means is the first day you'll open the jug, uh, and I'll go out and show you now, you check out the seedlings, see how they're doing, um, and you can, um, you know, you take the tape off to do that. You will leave the tape off for the rest of the process unless you find out you've opened them way too early and you need to tape them back up and uh, give them more time. But assuming you've opened them up at the right time, um, your next step is to then put them in a shaded area for a few hours or all of the day. It depends on how they're performing. Check on them throughout the day to make sure that they look like it's okay if they get a little wilty, but you don't want them like totally bent over and shriveled and all of that. Um, a lot of times my first day, I'll just untape them, air them out a little bit, and then I'll put the lid back on to um, not taped back, but kind of loosely on for that day. Or I'll leave them open for an hour and then I'll put the lid back on. I'll basically see how the plants are performing. The hardier ones can handle being out immediately, but definitely do not put them in the sun the first day. That first night, make sure you have the lid back on the container. You don't have to tape it, but as much as you can get the plants back in the container, you'll put the lid back on overnight. And then the next morning, you're going to open them up again. And this time you can put them in the sun, but definitely monitor them. If they look like they're shriveling after an hour or they're really unhappy, then put them back in the shade and give them another day before you put them in the sun. But that second night, you do not need to cover them uh, unless you're going to have a freak freeze or something. But as a, assuming the weather behaves, you do not have to put the lid back on the second night or any night thereafter unless it's necessary for other reasons. And then um, on the third day, really, you can transplant them or if they needed another day before they had the sun, maybe have them in the sun that third day. But really, it's pretty easy and just kind of use your best judgment for it. Now... <laughs> In interest of full disclosure, I actually started making this video about a week ago and I did not follow these rules. I got overly excited. I didn't look in my jugs and I actually opened two of four containers too early. I opened beets too early and my radishes too early. They, the radishes had some true leaves that had started sprouting, but they weren't quite developed enough for me to be comfortable to transplant them. And the beets were still just in their first leaf stage. You'll see that, um, but I'm also going to today open up uh, a plant that I think is far enough along to be hardened off um, as a good example for you to see better kind of what I mean. Um, and that is my Paris Island lettuce. So let's go outside and open that up first. So we have here our Paris Island lettuce. And let's see if you can see inside. If you look inside, you'll see that we have a few sets of leaves and you'll see better once I open it. <coughs> so I'm opening it now. This is the second time using this jug. You can see the red tape from last year. And believe it or not, it's actually harder to pull off the second year than it was last year because I think it's trying to take up the residue. Ouch. The residue as well. There we go. All right. There we go. All right. So here we have four sets of lettuce. And I think I planted four, oh, I planted six seeds. So out of the six, four sprouted. And if you look, you'll see these, see that little leaf there? That's the first leaf that sprouted with this plant. See that? Okay. And now we have our first true leaves that actually looks like romaine, baby romaine lettuce, right? We have our second set of true leaves here. And if I look down in here, I can see a third set coming up. So these are prime and ready to be transplanted. Now I could let them grow in the jug a little bit longer, but these are cool weather veggies and they'll be fine to transplant. So what I'm gonna do now, if you look, there's a little baby one. So we got, yeah, the fourth one is a little baby one, but it still has its first set of true leaves. So I could probably still transplant that if I decide to. Um, what I'm gonna do today is because it's raining on and off right now, it's drizzling just a little bit. Because it's raining on and off, I'm actually going to 
Oh man, I used to have a table out here, but then I took it to the front yard to have a nice decoration. <laughs> well, I think I'm gonna put the lid back on today um, for because it's raining. And then tomorrow I'm gonna have it off all day. But now we have it untaped. It's gotten so, a little bit of air. And uh, the reason I am co covering it, the reason I am covering it back up is because, but see, I'm not doing it like there's still a crack here, right? And the reason I'm covering it back up is because the leaves can get bruised if the rain gets really heavy, especially since the tree above tends to um, drop big drops um, from the leaves and um, that's not always the best. So basically you just do this and then tonight I will leave it like this um, and tomorrow I will uncover them and leave them uncovered all day. Here's the beets that I opened too early. And boy, they got a lot of water coming out still. Oh, that was from the lid. <laughs> um, and if you look, they are starting to get first true leaves there. So I'm hoping that in a week or so, I should be able to transplant them out. I want to do it soon because I don't want their roots to be hugely developed. Um, but they've been open for an entire week and they're doing fine. If I'd been smart, I probably would have taped them back up, but I didn't. So, um, all right. So now let's get to the video I shot the rest of this week, earlier this week, um, with my radishes and when I opened those beets up and, and the lettuces. So you can kind of see, um, the process for that. Let's start off with our, one of our mixed lettuce jugs. Gorgeous. Look at that, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Stunning. All right. So, a couple of things to note. This is multiple varieties of lettuce. Um, I think they look really good, really beautiful. They're in the sun right at this moment. I'm going to move them into a shaded area. But they look healthy. Now, these I planted as a bulk um, with an intent of just breaking them apart and putting them, not separating each of them, but putting them as chunks in the garden, which is an experiment for me. It's my first year trying the hunk of seedling thing. So that's this one. Now let's get to the beets and radishes. So here's my radish plants. I planted them in clumps of two to three and you can see here, there's looks like a clump of, <laughs> well, that's quite a few, okay. There's three, there's two plus a little one there. One, two, it's hard to count them. Okay, that's four or five. So they're in clumps on purpose. And um, I'm looking forward to trying to plant them up. Let's see where we're at with the boot beets. Okay. All right, a few notes about the containers. I should have, I made the mistake of not looking in the jugs first to make sure that we had true leaves coming up in the, in the plants. In the case of the beets, they are starting to show little bits of second leaves, but really they're on the first leaf. Let's assume that I had opened these jugs properly. <laughs> and with the lettuces, I feel like I did. So let's assume I open these jugs properly. At night, after the first day, and sometimes during the middle of the day, if they seem overwhelmed by the heat or by the sun or by whatever, and you're gonna have them as shade the first day anyway, just cover them back up. You don't have to tape it. And especially for cool weather veggies, they're gonna be fine. So I apologize that I did not the next morning show you what I did. But basically the next morning, I uncovered the jugs made sure the plants looked okay. Then I set them out in the sun. I did that for all four jugs. I had opened up a second lettuce um, 
And then that night, I didn't cover them. I didn't put the lids back on. And they were fine. And basically, until you're ready to transplant them, you can leave them off. Now, there are some exceptions. If you're growing kale or something that is prone to having something like the cabbage moth or butterfly come and land and lay eggs on it, you probably want to protect it somehow um, or maybe even put tool over it or um, something to keep them from ha being um, basically, um, you know, the pests already on them before you transplant them. But for most plants, you can just leave them out like this. Um, now, the other thing to be aware of is if you're opening up a jug for a plant that, um, you know, isn't quite ready for transplant, you have two options. Like I said, you can tape it back up, which I didn't end up doing, but you can tape it up, um, you know, and, and make sure it's well watered. The other thing is once they're open, they will dehydrate faster than in those containers. They don't have that natural moisture creation from the greenhouse effect. And so what you will want to do is you will want to check the soil to make sure they are not running out of water. Now we had a huge rain two days ago um, and <laughs> these plants are just fine. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to hardening. You want to, um, they're ready to be transplanted now, um, assuming they have their first true leaves or second true leaves. And you'll see for my radishes, we have true leaves coming out. Let's see if we can get close enough here. Let's find one near the edge. Here we go. This one, let's see this radish here. It has its first leaves, that kind of clover-like leaves that come out with it. And then it has these leaves here that are the leaves that come with the plant. And in fact, I don't know if you could see in the middle there, but they have a couple little tiny leaves also coming out, which is their second true leaves. So I feel fully comfortable going ahead with transplanting these, but that's for another video. <laughs> All right, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Um, if you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.